The Garden of Paradise is what Americans Richard Wheeler and Eleanor Huddle called the property they purchased a few years ago near the town of Vilcabamba in southern Ecuador. We heard about a very pretty farm that was near a river and uh, we decided just, you know, we we're curious to see what, what it looked like, you know. 30 seconds on the property and we knew that we'd been spiritually hijacked. What sold them was the fresh water that skirted the property. The river was important to us because we know how important water is in terms of survival and thriving. The story begins in May 2010, when a provincial construction crew begins work to widen a local road. So, tell us where we are. Okay, this is, uh, this is where we're standing is lot four on our property. And this is where the provincial government had thrown a lot of dirt and rock into the river. And so they were deliberately using the river as a dump? Well, they were using it as a dump, but also this was a straight cliff. Uh. And they didn't want it to erode out. So they threw the stuff into the water. Their appeals to stop the dumping ignored. Nori and Richard begin documenting the work of the crew. All of that rock and gravel is having a major effect on the river. If you cut down the length, the width of the river by half, what you do is you double the velocity of the river. Right. And with doubled velocity, what happens is, is that the river current picks up everything that was thrown in and, and takes it downstream. That spring, with heavy rains, the effect of this newly narrowed river hits home. And about two in the morning, Richard and I woke up to the sound of something that sounded like a train. The river had come in all the way in through there oh, and had no. just eaten out. And we weren't sure if we were going to be flooded up there. Right. We thought right. we might have to flee. It looked like it was under, going to undercut Amazing. the cliff that our house was on and take Amazing. our house out. So let's go on up and we'll okay. look at the other end, okay? okay. okay. So, the river, racing much faster than usual, floods one and a half hectares of their land. Richard and Nori file a complaint and months of inspections and meetings pass by. And then one day, the dumping simply starts again. When that happened, uh, I went kind of ballistic. And I said to them, I'm going to keep to LOCA. We're filing a lawsuit against you today. And it's going to be an emergency lawsuit to get you to stop. That lawsuit will become the first test of nature's constitutional rights in Ecuador. It's a test that will measure the space between a good idea and its application in the real world. Over in Ecuador, there's another promise waiting to be delivered. Nature was given rights in the Constitution, and this river is making its claim. Nori and Richard head to the city to meet with their lawyer, Carlos Bravo. Their aim is to have the Vilcabamba River restored after it was damaged by a government construction crew. We showed him the footage on the computer, and he said, well, how do you want to pursue the lawsuit? And I said, well, you know, Carlos, there's that new provision in the 2008 Constitution. Wow, so that was it. That was the moment. Richard and Nori forego any monetary award should their case be successful, because it's the river taking the local government to court, with Richard and Nori acting as its human representatives. The case hinges on the right this river has to exist, and not on damage to their property. For me, it was a great opportunity to do something for nature. This is the beginning of a legal system in favor of nature, uh, which we hope will be well received, analyzed, and studied. December 15, 2010, the Vilcabamba River has its day in court. We go in for the meeting with the judge, and Carlos does his thing and says it was not just an act of nature. The, the river has never destroyed land like this in the past. It was because you guys dumped all this material. He said it, of course, in fancy lawyer language. Right. And the judge threw the case out. Yeah. Perhaps because it's so new, Nori and Richard felt that the rights of nature argument hadn't been understood. She didn't get it. Not at all. 
we came out of there like, can't believe it. She has no idea what she's talking right. about. And I said, well, we, we are going to appeal this. And Carlos says, of course. So Richard, Nori, and Carlos went over everything again, presenting all the constitutional evidence to the Court of Appeal, to Justice Luis Sempertigui. The ruling overturned the first sentence and found favor with the river, and charged the provincial government of Loja, who was building the road with having damaged nature. And history was made that day, with the decision backing nature. The ruling was basically that they needed to clean up the mess. <laughs> and apparently it was done. We had just won the first lawsuit in Ecuador and in the world. Although it's been nearly two years since the ruling, and the province has still not repaired the damage, at least now the Vilcabamba River has the full backing of the law behind it. The truth is, it, there's a saying in Spanish that between the saying and the doing, there's a big stretch. And that's certainly true, and that's uh, totally been our experience here, is that beautiful things, beautiful words, and in the end, you really have to fight like crazy in order to get these new ideas in place. But Mother Nature is worth fighting for, do you know? What else is there to do? <laughs> <laughs> in a way, the Vilcabamba River case is a perfect symbol for the difficulties inherent in forging a new path, be it lithium mining, conservation, or environmental justice. Small steps, little victories, and countless hurdles to overcome.